That spell looks dangerous. Keep your distance. Necromancer build. This will be shorter and simpler than my other builds because its main purpose is to show you some of the cool options in the Andromeda mod, which changes Skyrim's standing stones, makes them a bit more interesting. You probably know how important it is to choose your stone wisely, so Andromeda is a rather substantial change to the general Skyrim experience. The build is a necromancer, but a friendly, cheerful and helpful one. He lacks the delusional power rush of a standard necromancer and sometimes even uses his magic to avenge all these people you can find lying dead in dungeons and ruins of this troubled land, allowing them to return to Mandus one last time. Yes, he has a morbid fascination with death and decay, but other than that he is a lovely person. The race of the build is pretty irrelevant, but a Breton or a High Elf is always a good choice for any mage. I went for an Imperial instead, because the build uses illusion and its calming spells anyway, so the voice of the Emperor felt like a good starting option. The standing stone is, of course, the Ritual Stone, which in Andromeda feels much less vile and and, well, necromantic. It gives you a chance to evoke a vengeful spirit from a dead NPC near you, regardless if you kill them or not. Then there is a random chance of a corpse you already got a vengeful spirit from will be spawned near you. So you can, for example, recycle it as a zombie using standard necromancy spells. It creates an endless cycle of spirits and zombies coming to your aid in every battle. Pretty unique experience, I must say. The main skills of our necromancer would be conjuration, illusion, alteration, enchanting, restoration, and maybe one-handed Though you can skip the weapon skill if you so choose, I went for it mainly for general convenience and the absorb magic enchantment on my dagger. It may also be a good idea to add a bit of alchemy to always have some decent magicka recovery and elemental resistance. In Conjuration, take the standard necromantic perks, including the Twin Souls and all magicka cost-reducing perks. Perk your illusion for everything that helps with calming your enemies down. As you are such a nice guy, you may sometimes choose to spur your foes. Also take every perk on the right side, Animage, Kindred Mage, Quiet Casting and Master of the Mind. Your Courage and Rally spells will work on your vengeful spirits and no enemy will be able to resist your peaceful and calming personality. You may need the dual casting perk too. In Alteration take all Expertise perks up to the Expert Alteration, all the ranks of Mage Armor and at least two ranks of Magic Resistance. In the Restoration tree you will need the Cost Reducing perks up to Expert, the Necromage and both ranks of Recovery. The Necromage in conjunction with the Master of the Mind will let you calm down the Draugrs and such and buff your Vengeful Spirits, so your undead leadership will be supreme. In Enchanting take the faster route to the Extra Effect perk and all the ranks of Enchanter. This will let you optimize your gear to your heart's content and it will be quite necessary for a character with almost no direct damage skills. In your inventory you should have a place for a grand staff of charming and a staff of paralyze. 
so you don't have to always pay in magicka for your main spells. Other than that, enchant every slot you can with Fortify Alteration and Illusion. Fortifying Conjuration skill is uh, not that important because you won't cast these spells more than once per battle. Then try to fortify your Magicka and Magicka Regeneration. One slot for a Fortify Restoration enchantment will also be a good idea because you will spam the Poison Rune spell quite frequently. And as I mentioned, a dagger with Absorb Magicka and maybe Paralysis will be very convenient tool in the rare occasions of running low on Magicka. Your main spells will of course be all the reanimating spells, including a dead thrall in the late game. Then go for Pacify and Courage or Rally in Illusion School, and the armor spells as well as Paralysis in Alteration. In Restoration School get the Poison Rune as soon as possible and remember about healing spells as well, you may need them with your low armor rating. There is a very useful spell combo here, cast Paralysis at them, then repeatedly cast Poison Rune right next to them. The poison effect will stack with itself and since it lasts for 30 seconds, it is only a matter of time before they take their last breath. If they manage to stand up before that happens, just calm them down with your illusion and wait a bit more. You gave them some time to prepare for the final moment and in that granted them some peace of mind. They may even join you as ghosts later on. Overall, this is a nice crossover between a supporter or a healer and a necromancer who never runs out out of allies and always has an option to avoid combat and resume it when the time is right. Once you master your spell combo and get used to the new ritual stone powers, you can be pretty unstoppable without any damage dealing capabilities of your own. Also, Andromeda's Ritual Stone really encourages you to roleplay your necromancer in a slightly unusual, slightly different way. I went for a helpful and cheerful soul, doing a lot of minor quests for the citizens of Skyrim, never refusing when asked for help. The same build can be used for something like a wandering priest of RK, for example. And that's it for now. If you've liked my other builds, don't worry. The longer, more refined videos for Unmodded Game will still be uploaded. I just thought Andromeda deserves all the YouTube love it can get, so I am starting these new shorter videos for this remarkable mod. I hope I will see you again. And if you decide to try this one yourself, let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.